Local, America's number one, number one, number one, number one political hip hop radio talk show. Broadcasted live every Friday from 6 to 9, right here on my home campus in the great city of Newark, New Jersey, where our brother, Mayor Raz J. Baraka, is the mayor. And of course, the Mary Mitty Baraka is the chief of staff. But more to the point, the brother that's in the building today uh, is about to launch a new show uh, here. Uh, it's going to be called The Vote. And we call it The Vote because we've got some of the most powerful black minds in this country that are going to be talking about everything to do with elections. And we're going to have different uh, guests coming through to kick it with them. Uh, so let me just tell you who those folks are going to be. Of course, it's going to be a Mary Mitty Baraka, and it's going to be uh, our, uh, you know, outstanding uh, brother uh, who's been leading in the community. I don't even want to tell y'all for how many years, but it seemed like he's been on the job forever. Uh, our brother, Reverend Conrad Tillett, out of New York. And then, of course, we've got Tamika Mallory, uh, who's going to be coming through. And she's going to be one of their co-hosts as well. Uh, and, uh, and I've got to tell y'all that, uh, uh, Brother Conrad, I want to tell you, Amity, uh, what Jesse Jackson Jr. said was, he said he's finishing up his book. And he said as soon as he finishes his book, he's going to join y'all. Okay. Oh, All right. that's great. So he wanted that's to just great. let y'all know that. He said he's in North Carolina. I talked to him on Wednesday, and he said as soon as he finished the book, he said, uh, oh, and by the way, what he said about y'all, he <laughs> said he said all of y'all are an outstanding group of brothers and sisters, man, and he's honored to, to even be considered to sit on some sort of round table with you all. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, so we're not. Great addition too. Yeah. So we, so we not gonna hold y'all up. Of course, y'all know we're gonna kick it off with the vote, and then after that, we're gonna talk to a brother named Mashan, the general, who's coming into the city. He's gonna be doing a rally uh, as it relates to Kings Stop Killing Kings. Mm. So we're gonna have a conversation with that brother. He's gonna be in the building along with uh, one of our beloved brothers. Do it all from Lords of the Underground. Uh, and then, you know, we're gonna have some other people coming through, so we're gonna have a real good conversation about that to try to rally up the community. And then at eight o'clock, of course, DJ Rhino is gonna set the tables ablaze. Uh, gonna give y'all some real hip hop from a real hip hop DJ. So we wanna welcome y'all to the show. This is the uh, inaugural show, it ain't my show. Of course, it belongs to Mitty, and it belongs to Conrad, and it belongs to Tamika, and it belongs to Jesse Jackson Jr. So Mitty, it's your show. I mean, I think in my mind, you're one of the baddest brothers. Uh, you know, I tell you this all the time, man. I think you're the black car road. Oh, I think man. I think, you, I think, you should be sitting on television every time a television come on. They got something to do with politics. In my mind, you know, I'd be thinking, if I was one person I want to hear from, I want to hear from you. <laughs> so pull that mic down to you, my brother, and let's okay. talk a little bit, man. And you and John is actually having a conversation well, when you guys start. Well, right? yeah, and also you might want to put on headphones too. But the, uh, but yeah, like it, it's kind of like when people talk about who should anal or analyze news, and they're talking about various talking heads, and people are talking about analyzing politics. They normally talk to, or it's very often they talk to people who are who know the votes, who know how to get the votes, where the votes are, what it means. And we talked about like, you know, when you first started, you didn't win all those elections. Right? Like there were a lot of elections that were lost and we and you were breaking it down. You were like, nah, we didn't lose the election, we lost the runoff. Right. Right? And so what do you what did you mean by that? So in York, unfortunately, in many urban areas in the country, we uh, we have to succumb to a vote so to a, a a policy called the, the runoff policy, which is fifty plus one percent of the vote, um, instead of the person who gets the popular vote, they win a, the election outright, which should happen. Right, it's just like the regular voting system in America, where you are, we've been winning the popular vote forever, right? But unfortunately, the popular vote don't win it for us. Right. So people usually think that, oh, if you win the election, right, right if you get more votes, then you win. You win. But that's not the case in North New Jersey. Well, it's not the case in this country. In actually. the country, <laughs> 2016. Right. But there's some places where they they actually after the general election, the election is over. But we unfortunately we have to you know go into something called a runoff. And in that runoff election, you only get one month, actually, to campaign. So what's the difference between, like, you, like the runoff election and the regular election? It's like, it's a one month. Why does that make a difference? Well, you got to have a, a war chest. 
right? And normally you run out of money and, and you don't have any money left after the general election. So you gotta go get your votes again. You gotta make sure you follow up with all your committed voters. You gotta go through your voter file again. You gotta do another mailer. You gotta do phone banking. You gotta make sure you got volunteers. There's a lot that go into it. And a lot of times um, incumbents usually have the upper hand because they have a campaign um, at hand. They have staff at hand, they have money at hand. And if you're not an incumbent, you're, you're, it's like you're fighting an uphill battle. Okay, so so you know that you knew from later elections that there might be a runoff, right. and if there's a runoff, we need money. We need we need to have stuff stacked up, right? Now, is money everything in, no. in these elections? Because Absolutely it seems not. that there were an election that you were outspent a lot, <laughs> like a lot. Absolutely, that was uh, the uh, the infamous Shabar Jeffries versus Raf Barak election. Um, we were definitely outspent uh, three to one in that election. And uh, we, we had more ground troops. We had better strategy. And, and what we did, we did something different. I brought hip hop, you know, the hip hop kind of movement, yeah, the way yeah. we promote records, Absolutely. the way we do things. Right. I put that strategy in place in terms mm -hmm. of trying to get the vote out. And I had kids with picket signs and all kind of stuff. But, but, but I mean, like, you know, Oh, Bashir, jump in, jump in. Hey, man, what's good? What's good? What's good, everybody? You know, you know, John. Uh, it's been a long school year, bro. Yes, and, <laughs> and we're both school teachers. This is right. the uh, last, well, one of the last days of school. Yes, right? absolutely, man. You know, so you know, I'm always hemmed up, man, running. You know, not only teaching class, but running the after school program at Weekway, Weekway High School. All right, big shout out to Weekway IP every day, all day. All right, um, but it's it's it, you know. Brother, you, you, you jumped me right on in. I was trying to get my notes oh, together we'll get, and everything. We'll get, we'll get your cool. notes together, man, because nah, we cool. were good. You know, <laughs> you, you look like you were about to jump in. You were like, nah, hey, I don't want to jump in. And nah, I'm like, yo, you like, know. Man, I got you, big brother. Look, this is Brother Bashir Muhammad Akinyele, all right, Hotep Peace, all right. It is great to be on the All Politics or Local Radio, radio Show, uh, no doubt. Um, and, you know, we got a segment of, of the show called The Vote, which is moderated by our brother to my left. Big brother, man. I mean, this is the chief in the city of Newark right now. All right, y'all. Our brother, Mitty Baraka, man. How you, brother. Man, it's good to see you, brother. I know, man. It's good to be seen. It's always good to it's see good you. Good to be man. seen. And I'm you always working hard, brother. Man, absolutely. I'm you usually know, in the back. So. No doubt. Absolutely. <laughs> and giving back. And also, oh. also always giving back. But um, but yeah, you know, uh, Mitty, you, you know, <laughs> but I watched you organized elections you know what i'm saying going all the way back you know to the 90s because you were actually part of the, the early election absolutely right? yeah. absolutely absolutely um i mean i'm going all the way back to like 94 you know mm -hmm. when brother raz uh, our, our mayor uh mayor baraka you know you know we still affectionately call our brother raz uh, brother raz you know but um the mayor uh when he ran for way back in 1994 Four, mm -hmm. ran for mayor, all right, shorty for mayor, mm -hmm. and my brother was right there, you know. And and he talked about yeah. that time, and it was like, we we won, we didn't lose elections, we lost runoffs. Right. Mm -hmm. And you were there for some of those, we lost runoffs. All right. Well, let me just give you the um, a little bit of clarity to that. Ninety four, actually, Aziz, I was yes, in Aziz, DC. Right, right, I was right, in right, DC. Right, I came in right. when he ran at large, right. right, and that's when we first started winning. Right. Um, right. we, I came aboard, we got to a runoff right. situation every time I was involved. And then finally, eight years later, we actually won. Right. So, and what, what, what was the first victory? The first victory was South Ward. We ran in a South Ward, smaller campaign. I don't know why we didn't do that in the beginning, because <laughs> we were we born and raised in the South Ward. Right. Everybody knew who we was, the name rung bells throughout the community. So um, the election kind of was like a, a grassroots knock on door campaign. It wasn't about the money. So, so what you're talking about, what, so for people who don't know, and, and, the first and, elections and, that you were talking about were yeah. citywide elections. Right. Right? right? Like there was citywide for mayor and right. then citywide for council at large. Mm -hmm. And then the, the election that you won was when you went to the South Ward. Right, the South Ward. What was the thinking behind that? So, again, we still ran against a lot of money because Cory Booker's candidate, and, you know, Cory Booker's running for president now, but he had a candidate that right. was running against us right. named uh, Oscar James right. in the South Ward. So we thought, you know, we had the upper hand because, of course, we born and raised. The, the mayor's a teacher there. I teach over at Weekway. Uh, Akinelli has with Weekway. Everybody uh, got educated in the South Ward. Right. Um, right. We had girlfriends in the South Ward. We did everything in the South Ward. So um, right. 
we, we figured, listen, let's just take this small little ward and let's get folks in each in every block, every ward to step up and say, I want to vote for Mayor Raz Baraka. Let's change the story, let's change the narrative and get black people to just join the train in that one small area. And um, I think that election, um, we, we, we kind of focused on homeowners instead of renters. Okay. Um, because a lot of times, and, and I hate to say this, our people, mm. unfortunately, our people who rent and that's in the buildings, you, we have to spend about $300 per person wow. because they're going to forget. Wow. Election day. Wait, wait. So, <laughs> so you have it down to three hundred dollars per person per person to spend on a renter. Absolutely. Wow. Uh, probably deep. more than that. That's deep. But but um the, the the point is is that our people you know we just got to keep reminding them, reminding them, reminding them, reminding them to come to the polls on election day. Some people even will tell you on election day. Um yeah. Uh, I'm gonna come out and vote. Right. I, yeah, I'm gonna come out and vote tomorrow. Right, right, right. right. I'm gonna come out and vote tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. The election day is today. Absolutely. So that that's the kind of stuff that we face dealing with our people. But the homeowners is it's a little different. They're educated electorate, and um, they they ready to vote. We just use the mayor's voice because his voice is very powerful. I don't want people to get it, get it confused. The candidate is very important in elections. Okay. And you have to take the 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 gift, the God-given gifts of your candidate, and you got to expose it and put it on a platform so that people could see it, could love it, and embrace it. And that's what we did. We, we set up coffee clatches so the mayor could speak What's to people. What's a coffee clatch? A coffee clatch is a small meeting that we have in the community in somebody's home. Like, let's say Miss Jones next door, she has people, her friends in her immediate community. She invites all her friends, her family into a room, and we let the mayor talk about the issues. Right, and the mayor spends about an hour talking about the issues and what he's gonna do for the city, and that's that's what a coffee clutch is. So we we had about fifty coffee clutches wow. Wow. in the South Ward. Wow. No, no. Uh, big shout out, big shout out to uh, thanks for that clarification, brother. Baby. Big shout out to uh, uh, brother Aziz. That's our that's our good brother there. Yes, indeed. Keith Hamilton. All right. Um, yeah, he was definitely managing the campaign back in '94, my 94, brother. '94. That's wow. right, man. I was at Howard, man. Absolutely, that's right. <laughs> you know what? You were down there with my wife, right? Like, yeah, yeah, man. Natasha, <laughs> Natasha was down there at Howard, man, uh, with, with you, brother. But uh, yeah, brother, and um, you know, it's I did some old footage. I mean, some 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 yeah. videos. There's some a lot of there's a lot of old footage, and and, and doc, it's a documentary actually. Really? Two people trying to do a documentary on that wow. that mayor election of wow. '94. Wow. Wow, of 94. 94. Okay. Shorty for men. Shorty for men. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You but know, you know, I watched all of those races um, for, for uh, the, the, the Brother Raz, the mayor, yes. uh, ran. And, you know, I was, first of all, I was always impressed by his focus to come back home and to get involved in politics. And, uh, and and of course, uh, one of the things that I I said to him uh, years ago, because I saw him running against, uh, and we can't ever forget the great Sharp James and that formidable machine he had over there. Sharp James, Coleman Young, uh, that generation of black politicians were tough to beat. And uh, I was very happy when when you all went with that strategy and got in the council. Yes. And then, you know, ironically, uh, I talked to your brother when Cory Booker ran the first time. And, you know, I, I had very mixed emotions about Cory running because of what I felt was perhaps him using Newark as a stepping stone, him being outside of the context of that city. And I'm like, well, if Raz Baraka can't be elected mayor right now, why should Cory Booker be able to be? Mm. But one of the things I realized mm. was that there was a mm. generational struggle yes. going Absolutely. on. Yes. And I think yep. that, first of all, I think uh, uh, Sharp James would have beat Cory Booker. And I, I think people around the country forget Cory yeah. never beat Sharp James. Isn't that, isn't that Wait, break it down, comrade. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Break yeah. it down. I think, I think, I, I think you know, Sharp James would have beaten him. But I also said to Raz, I said, Raz, you know, once if Corey wins the, the mayor's race with all that other money involved, 
then what has happened is the people of the city have accepted a new generation of leadership. And I mm -hmm. said, number one, you become the number, you become an opposition leader on equal footing with Corey, and right. then you will be. You, it'll be easier to beat Corey than it will be to beat Sharp James. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, you know, Corey did what he did, and then of course uh, your brother succeeded. So Newark is a fascinating study. You know, obviously yeah. going back to Ken Gibson and just Jersey politics in general. But man, I, I watch with great admiration what you all did over there. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, brother Conrad, no doubt. And I also see Mitty as, as uh, I mean, I don't like to make these comparisons, but he also is kind of a Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the man of Bobby Kennedy. No doubt, no doubt, absolutely. And, you know, and, and, and community-wise, brother Conrad, you know this, and brother Mitty, of course, knows this, all right? You know, the city of Newark, when you do the history on it, in terms of black people and oppressed people, this is the city that hosted the uh, Black Power Convention. Yes, absolutely. You know? And then, absolutely. The, and then two of them actually. Mm -hmm. A lot of folk don't know that there were mm -hmm. two of them that took place. And then there was a, a Black and, and Political Convention that took place right here in Newark to build solidarity with our Latino brothers and sisters. Yep. And all of that was being spearheaded none other than our big brother, right? You know, the immortal ancestor. Now. Mom, Mary absolutely, absolutely. And you know what? Can I say something about Go ahead, brother Connor. Yes, sir. See, one of the things that was important about this, and we had conferences in Philadelphia, and we brought to Howard, following the same. See, even though uh, uh, Imam Mary Baraka was a cultural nationalist, cultural revolutionary, uh, he understood. And see, we're so ideological now. We yes. have a Black Lives Matter person, a left winger. Uh, we we with this group. Right. And, uh, Me with too. Group. Right. And, but but, uh, but that absolutely. conference brought together people from every uh, area of black thought and black life, including right. black politicians, elected officials, black nationalists. Right. And we came together, and, and every conference we had, going back to Padmore's, it was always about bringing all of the black folks together, even people with different views, so we could hash out an agenda for mm. black folks. But we're so bad today, we'd rather be in a room with white liberals mm. uh, and, uh -oh. and we would our own black conservative brothers. We yeah. got to be able to, to do in the spirit of that black independent convention and bring our people together regardless of their ideologies and hash out an agenda for all of us. Absolutely. And, the, you know, and Brother uh, uh, Amamu Amir Baraka and many of the activists of that time, Brother Conrad, you know, they, they put forth something called unity without uniformity. Without uniformity, that's right. And we struggle we with that today. That. We, you're Absolutely. right. We struggle with that today. You know. Yes, we do. You know, yes, if, we if do. we don't, if you're not down with my thing, you're not down with my movement. Right. I don't want nothing to do with you. You know, and that's crazy. Absolutely. That's crazy. But you know, like I said, our brother Mitty is here. You know, and and, I, and he's one of the most brilliant minds, political minds, no doubt. Um, you know, uh, not just in the city of North, but in America. You know, and he's a, and he, you know, he's part of the hip hop generation, the youth. You know. I know we, oh, yeah. we some of us might be touching on elderhood in a minute, but <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop saying hip hop. <laughs> right, right, right. No we doubt, past that. No doubt, we but past it. but my brother, man, he's he's learned so much from such so many great minds, Absolutely. you know, and yeah. putting that into 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 practice right here in the city of New York, and that's why we have the most progressive the most progressive mayor in the uh, in 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 the country. All right. In the country, I'm sorry, John. I don't want to hold the mic. No, nah, but you. But one of the things you talked about in terms of being like uh, understanding the the influence of hip hop and what you do right. was with elections. So we were talking about how, in 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 some elections you were outspent. Yep. And you were able to do that, do marketing, and you said hip hop helped you with that. How? Like what what was there about hip hop, your relationship with it, that helped you understand elections <laughs> and actually helped you start winning? Yeah. So my brother. Also, besides being a politician, educator, he's a spoken word artist. Right. Like he's a poet. So we actually used his word around the city, and we got small groups of people in rooms to hear him mm -hmm. speak. Right. So the only thing that could outdo money is if you hear the candidate live in your face and hear him for yourself. Because the only uh, weapon they have against us is lies. Mm. Right. It's not the money; it's the lies. They put lies 
behind they put money behind lies. So it's hard to beat that if you can't get in front of people. So our job was to organize the people, put them in spaces so that the mayor could, you know, talk about our message mm -hmm. and our situation. And that's how we use hip hop. And we, we, we met people where they were at. Mm -hmm. Like we would take people that was in the park, we have a meeting in the park. We met the Muslims at King's mm. restaurant. We used to have meetings at King's all the time. Um, the uh, senior citizen home will have meetings there in the uh, recreation centers. And we just talk to people, talk to them, let the mayor talk to them, let the mayor lead the meeting, let the mayor be the vocal uh, premise of the whole entire meeting. And that's and that basically caught the attention of folks. Once folks heard the mayor talk and verbalize and, 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 and talk about and articulate the conditions of black people and what we needed to be doing in this, in this city, it was over. Mm. Okay. Now, a lot of people, there's always criticism, and they say, hey, it's machine politics, and machines are winning, yes. right? What do you, how do you respond to that, and what, do you, what can you teach on what that even means? Machine politics is real. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to understand, look, if you put Mickey, Mickey, Mouse, Mouse. Mickey Mouse on the line, He'll win, because mm. our people have been trained to go uh, uh, line A all the way. Absolutely. Right? And, 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 and we got to blame black, a lot of black people for that, mm. right? right? We never had the, the, the foresight and self-determination to build our own party, mm. right? We never mm. was independent enough, and we depended on people too much um, mm. to step out on our own. And we, we, we leaned on the Democratic Party, we leaned on them and leaned on them until we got our people in a... Uh, 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 kind of psychotic like state mm. where they couldn't get away from one, two, three. Whoever's on the line, we're going to push it. Mm. Um, and, and that's what they do, and they use that. Mm. But, but what I was, I think I'm coming from it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between machine politics and just good grassroots politics? Aren't they really the same thing? It's the same thing. When you, when you get people to vote in the way that you want them to vote based on the connections that you make with them? Yeah. Well, let's, let's, uh, uh, John, let, let, can I just say one thing about right, that? Right. Uh, you know, I would say it's, uh, my view is that it's a little different. I think because, you see, you know, like, like uh, Mitty said, a machine in the classical sense, uh, if they put Mickey Mouse on the line, right. uh, <laughs> he's going to win. Now, a progressive machine is a different kind of thing. And that's what you all are building in North. Right. But one of the things that allows, one of the things machines, especially, you know, in an urban setting, machines t tend to not want people to vote. Getting back to the conversation mm. about the that's apartment true. folks, okay. tend to be transient and mm. haven't really right. put down roots in a community, right. aren't really that vested yet. Yes. But, but a machine is happy when just their folk come out to vote. And, and not the masses. So it's a, I would say it's a little Correct. different. A, a true grassroots organization is trying to get the masses out when many of these old line uh, classical machines, if only 300 people are needed to win the election, if they can get 300 people out, they're happy and they hope the rest of the folks don't come out because they, they'll, they'll secure their victory. But, but here's, the, here's, the, here's the deal though. It yeah. takes more money to get the masses right. of the people out, right? right? We gotta get the more people out, the more money you gotta spend. Right. Right. So they, they, they have it down to a science. They do. They, they, they have do. a group of votes and yeah. a group of folks that they depend on in every election. Um, yeah. And so they just mail out to those prime folks. Voters. They Absolutely. Prime voters. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're spending right. a, a lot of money and not targeting right. the votes. Right. And we get two people to come out. Right. But, <laughs> but, but okay, so maybe I'm looking at it a little naively, right? Because yeah. well, the way I'm looking at it is the machine got it right. As in, there's a real thin difference. Like, there are a lot of machines, yeah, they don't want a lot of people to vote, right? Right. But when we, we talk about, like, a bunch of activists talk about, hey, we're going out, we're talking, we're talking to different people, but those, that, the verbal, that, the talk doesn't connect to votes. No. Like, you brought out that you know, we went after the renters at first, but then we went to the homeowners. That's right. Uh -huh. Because the homeowners uh -huh. vote, right? Right. So isn't it, is it, shouldn't we all be thinking instead of, like, let's get some generic masses out to vote, mm. let's talk to as many people as we can, mm. and let's make real connections, mm -hmm. and get the people that we make connections with Absolutely. out to vote? Absolutely. Our folks, folks that we relate to, folks that's in the same kind of conditions wow. that we into, that's, um, you know, they have, they're vested in the election. And I, I mean, we, I think we, 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 we're doing that now, 
And also I wanted to add to that machine piece. Machine is strictly just an organization, right? right? And that's how you gotta look at a machine as an organization. Right. And we build our organization from the bottom up mm -hmm. where right. we understand what votes to get, who not to do, who not to go after in these elections, mm -hmm. um, what vote is gonna come out. And we, we actually have a strategic uh, way of getting our votes now that we in this position in this space and, and for years and years we were idealistic about we need to get everybody out and we need to get people to vote and, and that right we spent tons and tons of money yeah. on folks that didn't come out to vote and wouldn't mm. come out to vote and wouldn't come yeah. out mm. right. and, 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 and some I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brother Conrad. Yeah. No, I'm just gonna say that's see, see, Brother John. It's not that you're not. It's not that you're looking at it naively, but really, until you really run for office, it's very hard to understand. I have run. I, I did not win, <laughs> uh, but but I actually run twice. Um, I, first time I was just raising issues in Harlem when I challenged Wrangle back in 2000. You challenged uh, Charlie Wrangle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beat Charlie Wrangle? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, because because I saw Harlem being given away and our people being run out of Harlem. And ultimately what happened is Wrangell held the position so long and did not uh, 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 train a new generation of leaders and deliver the seat to mm -hmm. Keith Wright. So we lost Boy, the only black right. seat that, uh, that we ever had in Manhattan. 84 years of black leadership, we, we ended up losing it. Mm. Uh, and that's that, that a whole nother issue. Percy Sutton was the brains behind mm. the four horsemen, and when he was gone, that was it. So let me just say this. Let me just say this. Uh, what Mitty's saying is so true because. See, and, and this is, like you said, it's, you got to blame black folks for this because right. as an activist, Raz Baraka ran. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had the legacy right. of a, a Mamu and Mary Baraka right. and his mother in that city, mm -hmm. the legacy of the work that had already been done, him coming back as an educated man, gone away to a black college, a principal at a school. Right. I mean, you couldn't get a, more, a, a, a better mm -hmm. person in That's terms right. of investing in the community. And yet that... Those good things did not deliver uh, the, the, the votes that he should have had. Right. And so as they build right. a machine now, it's about seeing who's going to vote. That's mm -hmm. what prime voters are. That's mm -hmm. what the homeowners, people represent. Look, man, you've got to get out and vote because the politics in your community is determined by only by who goes into those booths and pull that's the right. levers. And, and oh, that's, that's what right. we, we need greater political education. Right. But you have to build a machine in order to win. Just massive, mass movements, uh, uh, if you, they, they still have to be forged into political machines. Jesse did mm. that in 84, 88. Mm. Marion Barry did that That's in right. D.C. Sure. Coleman yeah. Young did it in Detroit. Harold Washington was able to do it in Chicago. Right. And, and, of course, and Newark has a long history of it. Yeah, cause, wow. cause I, and, and I guess that gets to, to what, I was, what I was trying to say, right? Like, because it seems like when we don't like people, we say, oh, they're part of a machine. Mm. <laughs> but when we support it, right? We go. It's effective grassroots, right. Right. right? right. And effective, but but it's all the same thing. You really have to get the people who you have to connect to people and get them to come out and do what you want them to do. No, no doubt, no doubt. And 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 brother Mitty and and Conrad, brother Conrad, listen. I you know was you know a part of campaigns you know back in the early '90s. However, I was one of those brothers. <laughs> Who did not believe in the vote? Wait, right. wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on. Wait, so you, right? you, I was you went many on campaigns. He believed in the message. I believed in the message, but I didn't believe. I believed <laughs> wow. in my brother Raz. I believed in my brother Mitty. You know, and what they represented for 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 black people and oppressed people in the city of Newark. However, I did not believe in the vote, and that's why. You know, I think. Uh, you got to be here sometimes when John and I used to, oh my, we got into intense yeah. debates right on this air, right on this radio, radio hey, show about, hey. the, about he was, vote. He was like, no, but white people aren't going to vote for Trump. <laughs> They're not going to vote for him. No, they vote for him. <laughs> they vote for him. <laughs> so I, but I, mean, I, I, I say that to say this because, you know, there, there, there are people like, there, there, people, there were people out there like me who were like, you know what, man, the government failed us, right? Policies failed us. You know, so therefore, and we, and we kept voting, we kept voting, but we got no results. So we, so many of us got completely turned off to the vote, you know. And my question, my question to you, Mitty, is, mm -hmm. and you did this effectively too with North. How did, how did you kind of convince folk 
that were like, man, I can't, you know, the vote thing, I, I can't support that. I don't believe in that, you know? Um, how, 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 how did you kind of convince or, or Or did you convince Sorry. him or just go to homeowners? I'm, <laughs> no, 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 no. There's <laughs> <laughs> more to it than that. Okay. <laughs> First of all, you know, uh, Malcolm said the ballot of the bullet. Right. 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 So we don't have an army. Mm. We don't own a bunch of machine guns. Right. Right. We would never win a revolutionary war mm -hmm. in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought the best option would be the ballot. And every black community, you know, we, we are cool. Mm -hmm. So we had to normalize voting. We had to make voting cool. Mm -hmm. We had to make sure people understood that if you don't vote, like Puffy said, you die. Mm. Vote or die. Right. right? So we had to tangle voting to your regular everyday mm -hmm. cycle of going out. You know, uh, getting an education, helping your kids get to college, um, getting your money so that you could pay rent, getting your money so you could pay, you know, your bills. We, we made voting a, 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 a everyday thing right, and a natural thing for people. Right. And we did it by way of, and like I said, the, the rallies. Right. We, we made some fresh T-shirts. We got a lot of young people involved. We got a lot of young people involved because any change that's going to happen in America is going to be done by young people. Right. Um, so we made sure that they were at the forefront. Uh, we created a youth movement of, of, of educated young black people. So when people saw Raz Baraka, they saw a young girl mm. in front or a young boy right. standing in front mm. saying, we want North, we want the city North, believe in North, believe in North. We came up with a cool slogan, of course, right? right. right? That we could, we could put everywhere. And um, I took it on a, a whole different level, mm. right? I didn't just say, we're going to go out here and tell people right. we need to take over City Hall. I told people we need to be City Hall, mm. right? And everybody. When I become the mayor. The mayor we we become, become the mayor. mayor. That's you, right. You came up with that? No, my actually, my in a speech, my brother said it in a speech, and I caught it in a speech. Mm. Okay. And I said we should use this. Wow, that's dope. And he said, "Oh, this is dope." Uh, I said, yeah, 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 yeah. So we put it up everywhere on the posters, and I, I told him. He said, "Oh, that's that's dope." I said, "Yeah." So. We took that and out of the speech. Were, people were repeating right. that. Yeah, when I before, become mayor, during, we, we after the election, yeah. people were repeating that all Absolutely. the time. Absolutely. I mean, that's how we are, brother. We, black, black people, unfortunately, you know, we, we faddish, <laughs> like we clickish, right, right, we right, cool, right? right so right. we but, had to make sure that everybody, it was hip. But actually, what I think is that's just basic communication. It is. One, right? Like, I'm a, I'm a debate coach, I, 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 and one of the things we teach is effective communication. That's right. right. Is that sometimes a phrase says a lot more than that phrase. Mm, that's right. Because there's a whole speech. Absolutely. So they're listening to the whole speech. But that phrase, when I become the mayor, we become the mayor, right. I thought that was brilliant mm. because there were a whole lot of arguments being made, right? Like we're excluded from City Hall, right. you know, the the the, the past eight years and right. you know we're the board the of education, un right. Control, right? The state control. Right. And, and there were all these feelings that people generally had of being disenfranchised right. from their own communities. Right. right. And so I thought when when it was well, when I become the mayor, we become the mayor, I smiled. I was like, Oh, that's 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 a phrase making a lot of powerful arguments, right. even though it's just a phrase. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. I just think that that's really effective communication oh, no, because, a great thing. because people can understand the arguments that have been made. Essential in right. essential. I mean, you gotta have in that. other words, Absolutely. you know, when uh, you, you know, remember not uh, Walter Mondale killed Gary Hart in 1984 <laughs> simply by asking him, "Where's the beef?" Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> so, you know, you have to be sure. able to give that elevator pitch. Right. You have you to be to. able. I mean, Jesse Jackson's "Our Time Has Come." Oh, I yeah. mean, that was that. You know, that was tremendous. I mean, we can go through. I mean, the history of politics. But you know, for the average brother, average sister that are working, That's right. they have concerns. You got to really encapsulate a message uh, to yeah. them that that inspires them, that that can help them to see. So. You're right. That's that's brilliant communication. It's not yes. bad. It's essential in politics. Absolutely, absolutely. And brother Conrad, listen, um, brother Raz, Mayor Baraka, man. He, I mean, every everywhere he he goes, he political education, man. Right. It's political absolutely. education. PE class, right? I don't care where it's at. School, the block, the playground, the church. Absolutely. PE, right? But I I tell you this, brother Conrad, and and maybe this is deep. Mm -hmm. When, mm -hmm. when, before Brother Raz ran, you remember this, John? Before Brother Raz ran for mayor, he said, he said, right here on this radio show, he mm -hmm. said that if no one else, we asked him, who's going to run for mayor? You know? Right. And he said, well, you know, we said, if no one else does, I'm going to do it. Right. No one else mm -hmm. does it. And I, and I said, why? 
And he said, uh -huh. well, the mayor controls the police department. Yeah. I said, right. I said, whoa, what? I said, hold on, hold on. The mayor controls the police department? Wait, you asked that? You, you, yeah. you didn't know? Brother, I... Wait, but brother, sure. Brother, brother. That was only four years ago, man. <laughs> no, sir. Listen, this is what I'm trying to tell you, brother. The mayor controls the police department, <laughs> the fire department, right? That's influence on the board. All these major institutions in our community, right, um, that every day, all day, we we are part of. Oh. The mayor is in in the, in the, in the, in the position to put folk in place, right, to govern these these institutions. And I'm saying that for a long time, I kind of thought seriously. I mean, I was you know misinformed about some things. You this know, was five I, years ago, man. Nah, this no seriously. <laughs> teaching the kids. No seriously. <laughs> no. When the when the mayor came on, you must not have been listening at those movement for change rallies. No. <laughs> No, I was like, why are we still got to vote? But no, but seriously, no, but seriously, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I mean, you know, yeah. you know about the, the science of politics, but you're like, wow, like the mayor. I mean, the way the when Brother Raz was on the show and he broke it down, just simply right. saying that the mayor controls uh, right. the the police department. And right. and remember, at that time when the, when Brother Raz was running for office, right? Remember, it was there police was, in Newark were hot. It was hot, but there was many cases of police brutality going on. Yeah, they on. were like, right. they were hot. They were right. just... Absolutely. Right. You know, I'm talking about in other cities, you know, I mean, Ferguson was on fire, you know, Baltimore. Right. You know, and, and you know, folks, I mean, and he says didn't understand, many of them didn't understand how, how the system worked like that. Well, I mean, you and know? Newark had a consent decree before, right? Like, right. there were so many documented cases right. of police brutality right. there. Absolutely. Right. And we still under consent decree to, today. But right. but in a positive way a positive now, way, yeah, right? Like fix it. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I just bring that up because a lot of folk, when you when you're talking to folk, um, even when you're teaching, man, people still kind of like, what do you mean? You know, the mayor right. controls the police department or the fire department. You know, what does that mean? You right. Know because, what I'm because the only reason why we're still. What? I was gonna say the only reason why. Oh, go, go ahead, Conrad. Conrad. No, no, John, I'm sorry. Well, I, I, because I can't, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, I can't. No, oh, no, no, go ahead, brother. Yes. But, but I just wanted to say, you know, but I understand what you're saying, Bashir, because, see, the hardest crowd to get in politics is not just, uh, uh, you know, as uh, the so-called American dead uh, Negro. That's not the hardest. I mean, he's hard. Right, you know, right. Me. But the hardest one is the is the one that has an ideology right. that tells him not to vote. Mm. Uh, and, and, and I think that sometimes our most learned and most informed brothers and sisters in the community, uh, it takes a special political education class to get them to see the importance of voting mm -hmm. because in many ways, sure. you know, you could make the argument that uh, that politics doesn't solve every problem, and of course it doesn't, but, but there's no way you can make the argument when you really break it down to people right. that politics is going to solve some of the problems. I mean, right. uh, Rodi, what was the last Italian mayor you had in Newark? Was that Anisia? Well, what was that? Anisio. Anisio, yeah. yeah. You, there's no way people can argue that things are worse or not better under Raz Baraka, Sharp James, and Cory Booker than they were then in the 1960s and Ken Gibson. So, you know, we, we, we have to understand politics, especially our, our more nationalist and learned brothers. Politics has its place. Right. It is important for what it does. Right. right. And it doesn't preclude anything else that we do, but we need to be plugged into all elements. That's why no matter who they were in terms of conscious black folks, they ultimately had to make their bones with politics. That's why Bobby Seale ran for mayor, right. even right. coming from the Plant Panthers. That's why Mr. Muhammad said right. a, guy, a, a politician like Adam Clayton Powell who will fight, fight for you should be supported. So in every Kwame Toure, everybody right. understands that you've got to deal with politics. And sometimes it's hardest to get the brothers that have a, a little bit of knowledge or a lot of knowledge to understand. Absolutely. That, yeah, we Absolutely. still have to. I, absolutely, brother Conrad. They'll sure. say, brother, our political prisons aren't free, brother. You know, what's up with the elected officials on that? You know, <laughs> you know how I go, brother. You know, when you have these discussions, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, they'll run it down like that. Brother, we didn't get our reparations yet, brother. You know, <laughs> how is politicians working? I mean, how, how are the elected officials working 
working for? How's the system, how are we really uh, controlling this system, you know, the political system? You know how, I, I'm telling you, these are the conversations that go on now, not yeah, just cynicism. Yeah. Right. But absolutely, absolutely. But I mean, not, not just, not just, right. But not just on the, not just in barbershop, barbershops. Right. Now, I'm talking about social media. No doubt, there's right. heavy debates right. going on about. Yeah. Well, right. I think we need to, we need to, politics. we right. need to redefine politics, mm -hmm. right? So that, because, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think you know, like H. Wright Brown said, right. being born black is political, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In this country, right. so absolutely. Uh, if you, if you miss in that boat of politics. You have no say so in discussion and in a direction of where your city is going. Right. So you cannot complain about the things that's going on in your town, or on your street, on your block, or even about police brutality. If you're not choosing who your new, uh, your next police director is, or you're not choosing who your next fire director is, or who your next mayor is for that. Right. So you got to be able to be involved, and we got to be able to articulate that to young people and change the, di the, the dynamics of what politics is. Mm. No doubt, absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, you know, going back to when the mayor, um, before he ran, you know, he talked about how, on, again, on the show and everywhere, on the corners, on playgrounds, the right. churches, he talked about how we rallied, right, as activists, we rallied, but we, we, we constantly ended up at City Hall. At City Hall, every time. <laughs> every time, brother. <laughs> we I don't care what, right, yeah, we in front of City Hall, right? Yeah. And, and Brother Rod said, That's funny. Man, boy, <laughs> man, Rock said, you know what, we're going to get in there. We're going to get in and get those resources and help help people, you know, help Norkers, help uh, black people, help that's Latino right. people, help oppressed people. Right. And, it, and and that's when he made it crystal clear for me, you know, yeah. like, we got to get involved. Even 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 myself, even when, I, I'm telling you, Conrad, Absolutely. you know where we come from, brother. I was reluctant. Yeah, no, I, I, you know? I get it, but, but you know, when you think about it, uh, you know, and I appreciate what uh, Mitty said earlier, you know, quoting Malcolm, the ballad of the bullet, right. you know, Dick, Dick Gephardt, uh, the uh, congressman from Missouri once said politics is a substitute for violence in mm. terms of mm -hmm. dividing resources right. up. And, and the, the reality is, uh, even going back to a movement for change, right. Right, Sherry, That's right. you know, I saw where Scarface is running for uh, yep. city council yes, yes, in, yes, in yes, Houston. Yes, and yes, and, yes, and yes, I, you remember we used to say a movement for change, yes. said, listen, you're always talking about the hood. Uh, <laughs> if you love the hood, if you're concerned about the hood, why not run for council or the mayor or the state senator and control the resources that go to the hood? Mm, that's right. And so, you know, just to give uh, Mitty some background, see, we brought Puffy and Russell into the understanding right. of politics. That's where that slogan, politics or die, came from. Yeah, yeah, hands, and die. Once, yeah. hands and once scratched turntables mm. will one day pick presidents. And right. we said that if Jesse Ventura could be elected governor, Right. Of, of the state of Minnesota, then why couldn't Chuck D or KRS-1 right. become elected? So, you know, it's a lot of synergy here. I mean, we all came up together, Sister Soldier, yeah. Yeah. to get her contribution to that. Uh, and, and, of course, Rad came right. to movement for right. change and, right. and, and spoke. But, you know, it was, a, it was a great time because not only did we have Jesse and right. the minister as our examples, we all are babies of ja Jesse Jackson's 84 campaign. But we also had, you know, it's not an accident that Raz went to high school, I mean, to college, and grew up in Newark, mm -hmm. and then went to college in D.C. So, That's right. I mean, there's some great, great examples, but the reality is, as Mitty said, we can talk about going back to Africa, That's right. we can talk about doing for self, starting our own businesses, and none of that is a conflict with saying, if we are the majority in a city, mm. we should control the political offices. Mm. And, that's, the and the only way you can do that is follow the book. book. Go, ahead. Go ahead, Brother Conrad. Yes, sir. That's it. That's, that's absolutely. You know, we get we getting close to the end of the segment, man. <laughs> that fast? Wow, man. Tom. Go ahead, Brother Conrad. Don't let us end without acknowledging, and then I'm finished. Uh, today, on 125th and 7th yes. Avenue, the, the masses gathered, and Dr. Yosef Ben-Yaskin yes, was oh, wow. appropriately 
honor there yeah, so, in the in the shadow of the African Square yeah, so, where the great rallies of consciousness took place in the Master Harlem. Teacher. There in the shadow of the Teresa Hotel where yeah, Brother Malcolm so, so. Uh, had headquarters and met uh, Fidel Castro. Yeah. There in the shadow of the statue of the great Reverend uh, Adam Clayton Powell. That square today, as of today, 125th Street is known as Dr. Yosef Ben Yaka. Wow, powerful Wait, teacher. So that, wow. That's, that's so, a blessing. Yes, the master teacher, brother, no doubt, no doubt. I shade to the brother, no doubt. No shade. Uh, Dr. Clark is is honored in in Harlem, and now his his brother, his good his comrade, his good friend, Dr. Ben. Right yes. The street, so. Wow, powerful brother, no doubt. We definitely had to take some. We definitely got to take uh, had to take some time out to acknowledge uh, Dr. Ben, man. You know, and please go, folks, go go cop Dr. Ben's books. Africa, the mother of Western civilization. No, when he says cop, he doesn't mean, doesn't mean actually steal it. Yeah. He kind of <laughs> means buy, buy it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right. Make, <laughs> no doubt. Make sure you buy, make sure you buy, okay, Dr. Ben's book, Africa, the mother of Western civilization, written so, written so many uh, 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 African uh, origins of Western religions. I mean, you know, uh, we the black Jews. I mean, so many, so many books, man. But no doubt, brother Conrad. Conrad, my brother, listen. Moving for change, brother has planted seeds all over the place, Absolutely. all over the place. Yeah. And folks, folks heard you, brother, back in the late '90s, brother, in the early 2000s, brother. But don't, but, don't, but tell them don't stay there because I'm still. Talking <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate people saying that, but I have to remind you that's no compliment to me. I'm still alive and I'm still talking. No that's doubt, no doubt, hey, so brother. You meet the day too. Okay. No doubt, absolutely, and that's why we. That's listen. You tore it up in Harlem, brother. You know, no doubt, and that's why you know we when we were when Ed, John, and myself were creating this this show. You know, we were talking about people, you know, to have on a monthly basis on our radio show. You were one of the one of the ones we definitely definitely um, had to reach out to. Well, I, I, I'm appreciated very much, and I'm greatly honored to be here with you, brothers. No doubt, no doubt, absolutely, absolutely. But well, look man, what's the deal, brother? I mean, we I'm we at the end. This. We at the end now. Well, not not quite at the end. I mean, we still got some time. Oh, we, we got, got some time. Okay, yeah, cool. we got about we got a, a close to ten minutes. Oh, cool. That's what's up, man. Okay, all right. So you know, I was gonna get into this whole hip hop thing. You know, I mean, oh, did you get a chance to see the Wu Tang Clan documentary? I didn't see that yet. DJ Ryan, I don't know you saw it already, right? Woo. But I I I follow Wu Tang heavy. Oh, no doubt. Early nineties, oh, so I know, brother. You you would. I right. actually was on. On a little small tour, Wu Tang Clan. Right? Really? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You said you were on a tour? This is a small little, little tour. Right? Oh, all right. So, what, what, what did you do we, on this tour? So we, we, um, I was with Tracy Lee. I don't know if y'all have heard of him, but he was an artist. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, we did some spot dates with Wu Tang Clan. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I got a lot of stories. <laughs> you know, with Wu Tang Clan. But, but the question I have is, were you an artist or a manager? I did both. Okay. Wow. Because I, I always see you as or, like you you organize stuff, mm -hmm. you you stay in the cut, you organize stuff, yep. you make sure stuff goes right, yep. uh, you make sure people get paid, <laughs> you make right. sure right. you make sure you make sure that stuff happens that's supposed to happen, yes, right? Indeed. Like and people do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Like on tour, you you had to protect some people. Hey, that's that's it no it doubt, right there. no doubt. <laughs> okay. DJ Ronald, no joke. DJ Rhino, seriously though, I mean, what you you know, it, it was all right. You give me a thumbs up or you know. Oh, uh, it was dope. But, but it was dope. Saying, it was you were right. said it was dope. Fully informative. Yeah. Fully informative. A little something. You got you got flow. A little something. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, I want to ask we this next one. Next one. Okay. Okay. Because at some point, I, I'm right? a hip hop baby, man. Yeah. At some point, right? I'm a hip hop baby. No doubt. I grew up in that generation. You know, my father. He, he was the original hip hop artist, right. the last poet. Yes, yes. No doubt. right. No doubt. But uh, I, I, you know, I grew up with Wu Tang Clan and you know Tribe, that kind of thing. Right. So I love hip hop. Nobody can't tell me nothing negative about hip hop. Well, the toughest album in hip hop history was the one your brother was on, the Miseducation. Oh, oh right, yeah, that's, right, that's, right, one, right. that's one of the best. Yeah, yeah, one no doubt. Best. absolutely. He's actually coming out with another. Uh, my brother is coming out with a spoken word album. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right. Oh, that's All right. With Jerry Wonder is that's the cool. producer behind it. Oh, that's cool. And Jerry Wonder is with the Fugees, right? Yep. That's nice. Indeed. It's gonna be nice. <clears throat> I, you know, listen, many, look, I, I'm a I'm a hip hop head as well. But, mm -hmm. You know, I, I love hip hop music. You know, and uh, just just watching uh, 
you know, the Wu Tang Clan uh, documentary, mm-hmm. just it just brought me just to that to that era, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, when I first heard "Protect Your Head," uh, "Protect Your Neck," I was like, I mean, I was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh, so, you know what I heard? You, and you know what I heard him at? Where's that DC? I heard him on the Bobito show oh, man, Bobito back stretch. in the day, yeah. yo. You know, you know that, that's what it was about back then. You know, you find mm-hmm. underground hip hop mm-hmm. radio your radio mm-hmm. shows. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, big shout out to Bobito, man. Stretch on, stretch on, you know. And half pint. You know, oh man, remember those shows back in the day? Yes, indeed. You know, we just talking about that Teddy Ted, also too. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, talking yes, about that's that. Right. That's right. Powerful, powerful that's man. Right. And that's but, right. but, 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 like I said, Wu Tang. You know, Wu Tang Clan and and, and tri- definitely Tribe, man. I had a big debate. Over who was the best like rap group? You know, what, what, what top five? I should say top. Five. I had an intense debate about the top five rap groups, not rap artists. Okay. But rap groups. You know, number one for me was One DMC. Number one. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's classic. <laughs> not just classic. They changed the game. Like. The, the, they def- I mean, you remember when 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 running them came out? Yeah. When running them came out, remember before them it was like you know a Soul Sonic Force and all those guys. They was wearing like spikes and all this kind of right, stuff. Right, right. When they all came out, they just they just like people. That was like the '80s, though. Yes, 80s. Ab- yeah. absolutely. And then, but I mean, they got so, I mean, so large, but they were selling out arenas first, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Arenas, not those, right, not those right, clubs. Right, right. They were they were superstars. They, were, they became hip hop. Pop stars. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Second, Public Enemy. Yeah. All right. For me, I'm just saying that's my list. This is my list. Okay. Public all Enemy. Right. All right. Okay. Public Enemy selling out readers. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. But 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 they were like you know they were like the, the you know they were like the Black Panthers of hip hop, dropping that Black consciousness. Right. 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 Then I, I bring in you know my n- number three. This might be conscious. It's, it's, well, number three for me is Wu Tang. Right. Well, three. I'm sorry. That's not three. controversial. No, no. Yeah. Tribe Called Every- Quest. Tribe Called Quest, mm-hmm. three, four, Wu, mm-hmm. right? Number five, NWA. That's my top five for, for, for okay. rap groups. Now, uh, now the top okay. five. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not, that's good, not controversial. Nah. I mean, no, some people, you know, some people, ah, uh, you know, Tribe, yeah, they, you know, some people argue against that all the time. When I bring up Tribe as a top, as a top group, as a top group, I said rap group, rap group. They're like, ah, you know, I mean, what game do they change? You know, how did, you know, what styles do they come with a new flavor? You know, you know what I'm saying? In the streets. They, they came up with a different vibe, different way. Yeah. Right, right, they, right. It was different. Right, but right. how you gonna leave EPMD out of there, man? Mm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> uh, you know, listen, EPMD is, that's my group, man. They, they in my top 10, no doubt. Come now on. remember, this is Brother Bashir's top five. Not, not the official. <laughs> not the, you know, Brother like, Conrad. Now you're backing right, down now. Right. You're backing down. You're not willing to defend your top five. Now my, this is Brother Bashir's top five. But, um, no. No doubt. No, even, even, no, no doubt. Top top ten. We did a show with them back in the day, John. No yeah, problem. we did. Way back, like, yeah. 90, 93? Yeah, we did a show yeah. at Skinny College. And Chi Ali. Chi Ali and, <laughs> and, and um, Pete right. Rock and CL Smooth. Oh, right, man. right, yeah, right. Man. Oh. Yeah, Pete. Does Pete Rock and CL Smooth yes. count as a group? Yes, they do. Yeah, they're a group. That counts yeah, as a group. No, yeah, yeah. Man, you you know, know, I love Pete Rock and CL Smooth. They're actually oh. back together touring, so. Wow, yeah, wow. Those are my former neighbors in Mount Vernon, so, you know, and then don't forget new, uh, brand newbies from New York. Yes, so. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Brother Sadat, you big up to Sadat, he's a teacher now. <laughs> No doubt, absolutely. But I mean, I'm just saying, you know, folks, you know, you know, they, they, they may art, they they may put brand newbians up on that list like that. But you know, I'll tell you what that last album, brand newbians did uh, called the Foundations, is one of the really un unrecognized classics of the genre. If yeah. you haven't heard it, you should yeah. check it out. The but Foundation. You, but you know what though, when you're around young people, they don't. No, any of well, I, mean, I was just gonna say. <laughs> I was just gonna say. This, this sounds like a real old man right. hip hop conversation. They don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. They don't know any of this stuff. Some people can't see, but the, the interns, oh, great be. interns from Rutgers, right? But we got. And they're looking at us like, EP, yo, Pete Rock. Only one. I, listen, listen. we got connected dots, stuff. <laughs> right. But, 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 now you put the end. Oh, they be like, yo, NWA. You talking about? They had a movie. Right. They had a movie. Yeah, I knew the movie. They know NWA. NWA. From the movie. Public Enemy. Public Enemy. Who's that? You know, you know, but hey, it is what it is, man. No doubt, no doubt. They they definitely, you know, foundation for hip hop and rap music, you know. 
Um, and, and wow, man, just looking back but, at hip hop, I know we got to go in a minute, but just looking back at the development of hip hop, man, mm -hmm. just, I'm serious, bro. Just, I mean, as a worldwide phenomenon, just crazy right now. Absolutely. You know? I mean, something that, you know, I just thought was an odd thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, you cut a, you know, you play a little cassette tape, you play a little album, listen to the underground, you know, you know, hip hop artists, you just thought it was your thing. And that I think is everywhere. I mean, you got Palestinian rappers, right? Yeah, too. You yeah. got Chinese rappers, yeah, yeah, right? All over the world, French rappers, Korean Brazilian rappers, 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 exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, um, I'm sorry, DJ Ryder, you want to chime in real quick? Nah, I just wanted to say, you know, since we're on the subject of hip hop, man, we got to definitely say rest in peace to Bushwick Bill. Oh, yes, no true. Oh, yes, that's right. Bill. Yes, we do. That's right. From the ghetto boys, yes, y'all, no yes, doubt. Yes, we do. No doubt. Yes, we do. So, Mitty? Yeah, because I was going to get yeah. thrown back to Mitty because yeah. we're, we're running out of time, man. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, I think that there's there's so much potential in the stuff that you're able to say and teach and yep. all the other stuff. So, you know, talk to us in terms of your show. So, I mean, I'm happy that I'm grateful to be a part of this show. Oh, you know? I'm going to have Conrad here, the brother, the teacher, you know, from New York. And uh, I think this show will be great. I think we just got to make sure that we, we have a, a pathway where young people could get involved and they call in and we have a discussion, because mm -hmm. it won't be nothing without a discussion. We need right. some discourse, right? Some positive discourse back and forth so we can, you know, take it to another level. Um, like my father said, he never, if you are the same person you was yesterday, yes. right, yes. then you are backward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? yes. So we got to make sure that we be able to take the discussion to new levels. And I love, you know, voting for me is everything. Voting is a, is a, is a MAT-10 for me, mm. right? And I think mm. black people, we need to embrace it and we need to use it to do what we need to do in our communities to educate, to make sure that our people are in places and spaces where they need to be to help other folks. Because it's basically about helping people, mm. right? And we got to get our people angry enough, right? And, and, and angry enough to get involved. Mm. Not angry enough to pull out a gun and shoot your brother. Right. But right. angry enough to go out and vote when it's time to. Mm. Angry enough to speak up and speak out about issues that affect you, right? And that's the kind of thing that I'm just happy to be a part of this. And I think this is this is great. It's that's a great platform to do that. We're honored. Yeah, because you're talking about getting angry productively, right? That's like, right. You're talking about not angry and just taking it out on people, but angry and actually affecting change. Absolutely. No doubt, no doubt. What hey, Bill, make, sure I, make sure you all tune in every, every, every third... Um, I'm sorry, every second, every second Friday, every second Friday, every second Friday, y'all. All right. Now, all right. now we've done. Tune we've, in to the vote. Now, Mitty, you've been on our show before yes, a sir. lot of times. No doubt, right? no yes, doubt. Sir. And, but, you know, can you remind the DJ who your favorite hip-hop artist is? He already know what it is. <laughs> I told y'all. That's, <laughs> <my favorite group. laughs> that's, my, that's my group, man. No and doubt. I, Nas. You know, we got to bring Nas in there. I love oh, yeah, Nas. No doubt. There. Absolutely. Hey, hey, but, but before y'all go, let me give y'all a message from Tamika. She said to apologize to y'all. Says she just got off a plane, and she says she will be a part of this next month. Yeah. And she said y'all are some of the baddest brothers, and she is honored to be amongst y'all. That's what's up. That y'all would even want her voice to be part of y'all. So she says she apologized. She was in a place that was too loud. She just got off a plane. But, um, but you know, she was feeling some type of way that she wasn't part of this, but I told her y'all was holding it up. Y'all are just brothers. Y'all were doing the best y'all could do. <laughs> Yo. Take it to the next level, though. No doubt, no doubt. Big shout out to Tamika. Big shout out to Tamika Mallory, man. Absolutely. Putting it down for our people, man. These brothers, I ain't fine. No doubt, no doubt. No, Zay, yeah. Yeah, that, hey, brother, that's, that, that's, another, that's another teacher right there, Zay, right. man. You know, about to do it all. <laughs> too. No doubt, no doubt. We, we about to we about to move into this next segment. You know, we gonna we gonna be firing it up for the uh, Kings Killing Kings um, program. But y'all, make sure you all tune in to the vote. All right, every second Friday, it is the segment um, on the All Pods Local Radio Show called the Vote. is moderated by our brother, uh, Reverend Conrad Tillett. All right, uh, and our brother, the Chief Mitty Baraka. All right. No doubt, y'all. Make sure y'all tune in. Seriously, tune in every second, second Friday. Tune in every second Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, y'all. All right? Mitty, that's it, bro. That's it. I saw. Uh, I thought right. I saw the Chairman yeah. Jones in here. Yeah, I, I, in yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because it's, it's more segments coming up. We got, we got more segments <laughs> coming up on the All Pods Local Radio Show. No doubt, no doubt. That's Mitty, you want to close out, bro? No, I mean, like I said, man, it's a pleasure and an honor to be on, on the show. And, you know, when the brother asked me to be a part, man, um, Ed, I, I, I appreciate that, man, for thinking of me. 
Um, normally, under these circumstances, I would say no, <laughs> because I'm not running for office, and I don't plan to run for office. And I think um, the work that we do is thankless, and some people may call us kingmakers, but I call us change agents. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and we we want to try to educate people on how to make you know other folks with the voice, with the intention to become mayor or the council person or school board uh, member. We want to bring it to life. No doubt, no doubt, absolutely. Brother Conrad, is Brother Conrad still there? Brother Conrad, I think he's done. All right, look, John. Hey, no, I mean I'm just again honored to be here. I'm glad you're here, Conrad. Much respect. Yeah, glad that. You you are here too uh, because I think we can all I, can, I learned today and I and we'll be learning every every single month because a lot of times when people have the knowledge of how to win and how to do elections they want to keep that to themselves become That's secret true. knowledge much respect because That's you true. your brother all the time every day you're like you're mad you're mad you lost well here's how to win <laughs> you're mad you're mad you lost oh Here's how to win. Like, done. you That's be right. telling people right. what to do right. step by step. And now, show every, now, don't get mad. Just listen up, Absolutely. study, work hard. Because one thing I like about both of you, I'm a, I'm a debate coach. Right. Y'all love debates. Yeah. You love to engage, <laughs> right? You're not scared to engage. No but that is the, the best part about this voting. In the oh, right. Right. No doubt, John. No doubt, no doubt. Again. Tune in, y'all, every second Friday. The vote, moderated by our brother, the chief, right here in Newark, New Jersey, Mitty Baraka. We also, his co-host um, is Reverend Conrad Tillard and our sister, Tamika Mallory. All right, so make sure y'all tune in.